Well, it's that time of the year again, vacation time, and it's time to go to my least favorite place on earth, the beach. So welcome to Now I Know Things. If you don't know what this show's all about, check out this intro. Hey, Marianne. I grew up behind an amazing older sister. The only negative was that someone was always smarter than me and one step ahead. So I would pretend to know what I was talking about and interject in conversations saying, I know things too. But now, as an adult, I've decided it's time to put my knowledge to the test, to learn more about the things I love and dive deeper into the things I've missed. Finally, I'll be able to say, now I know things. Thanks, Marianne. So welcome to Now I Know Things. Thanks so much for watching this video. It's gonna be a little bit of different this time around. We're gonna be vlogging my experience as I joined my family at the beach in Virginia Beach. Gotta wear a mask though. say this I hate the beach it's sticky it's hot and it gets sand everywhere if I could I'd fake sick to get out of a beach trip I'd much rather be on a lake in Europe Alaska skiing doing something fun but I can't fake sick because my family is at the beach and I love my family and I would miss them too much so here we are at the beach hi Ava so this week, I'm going to try my best to enjoy it and in the process, learn why this terrible place ever became a vacation destination. But people didn't always consider the beach to be a place primarily for relaxation and entertainment. After all, the beach can be cold, hot, wet, dismal, and even dangerous. Here comes a big wave! From creation through the 18th century, the beach stirred fear and anxiety in the popular imagination. It was synonymous with dangerous wilderness, and it's where shipwrecks and natural disasters occurred. Biblically, the beach is mysterious and dangerous. By the 17th century, Dutch skiscape paintings began bringing tourists to seaside towns to look upon the same settings that the painters had observed, much like we do when we see our friends' pictures on Instagram. There was a deep cultural appreciation of the benefits of being at the beach that really started in England in the late 18th and early 19th centuries, largely because of the medical prescriptions at the time. In 1621, Robert Burton came up with the diagnosis of melancholy, which I think seems very similar to depression. He believed that the best cure for melancholy was to change your scenery. As factories started springing up in the late 17th century, the upper and middle class started to leave the cities and leave the grungy air in favor for the beaches. By the early 1800s, visiting the beach became so popular that railroads started to build stops that would end at beaches. This made it much less expensive for the lower class to travel to beaches. Like so many things in the late 1800s, Britain then exported the love for the beach all across the world. Resorts started popping up as humans started consuming the beach. Beach resorts started springing up in the 1800s as beaches became a human escape from everyday life. By the early 19th century, seaside resorts were springing up in Normandy, Southwest France, Northern Germany, and Scandinavia. By the late 19th century, they had spread to America, first to the New England coast, and then to the Mid-Atlantic, and finally the South. Ah! 
By the 1960s, the airplane package deal became all the rage, and this caused the resorts that had sprung up in the late 1800s to give way to many more resorts all around the world. The beach is a great time if you're with your family, but I tend to agree with those in the 1600s and 1700s that the beach is a dangerous, wet, and sticky place. It's a great trip. I'm glad that I got to spend some time with my family, but I wish we would have gone somewhere different this year and not always the same idea of going to the beach or something similar to that. So my encouragement to people are to think of new creative spots that we can still get away from the everyday life in order to spend time with our friends and family and the people that we love. Also, find someone who doesn't annoy you while you're driving. If you enjoyed this episode of Now I Know Things, I hope you'll subscribe and join the channel. We like to learn new things every now and then. Thanks so much for watching till the end. Hope you have a great day.